Okay, at this time I'd like to open the uh, Administrative Services Committee meeting for Monday, June 1st, 2017. Please call the roll. Here. 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 Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of May 15th, 2017 committee meeting? Make a motion. Second. Councilor Corradino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Uh, first item uh, under old business. Uh, is there anybody here to speak to old business? Ellen Clark. Hi, my name is Ellen Clark. I'm chair of the Promotion and Tourism Advisory Board. And uh, we thought it was a good idea just to ask anyone here if they're interested in having event cards at their business. The Promotion and Tourism Advisory Board just came up with these uh, for the months of June and July. We're trying to get them out uh, so we can get people at all the events in Oswego. So just let me know afterwards. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to new business under authorization. Um, Mike Riley, purchasing agent states, Broadwell Hospitality Group submitted a response to an advertised request for proposals to manage transient dockage along East Linear Park. I believe uh, Mr. Mayor has uh, the floor. Yes, sure. Uh, Tracy Hawthorne from uh, the Broadwell Hospitality Group's here. She can probably talk to it, but I wanted to give uh, the council uh, the financial implication. Last year we collected about uh, 1200 dollars from both sides, the east and west side of the river, uh, for both, you know, if a boat pulls up, ties up, it's kind of an honor system, you put money in the bucket. Uh, we collected $1,200 from both sides, the RFP says they're willing to pay $1,000, so uh, the only other thing to consider is uh, it'll take less time, DPW crews won't have to go down and maintain the walkway as they do now. That's it. Hi, my name is Tracy Hawthorne and I'm the Director of Operations for the Broadwell Hospitality Group and just here to answer any questions that you might have regarding the RFP uh, when that was brought to my attention. I was very excited about it because I, um, my office is in the building right along the river and um, there's a lot of boats that pull up there that are very confused. So I see this every day so I was like, yes, yes, we'll, we'll manage that, yes. So we were very excited about that mostly so that we can um, and just be more welcoming to the people that come to Oswego. That's our biggest thing. And um, Ellen, I'll take some of those cards for, <laughs> for the, we would like to try to put together some bags to present to people. Um, when they pull up on a boat, the plan will be that um, we'll have signage down there that would um, read welcome, first of all, and then perhaps something like Best Western Dockage, $1 per foot per day, and a phone number. And then from there, we direct them to come to the lobby and, um, ex and give them a welcome packet. They would have um, marketing materials for our community events. Here's where the library is. Uh, here's our downtown, a walking map, things to do in the city of Oswego. Um, we also offer other amenities, breakfast, shower, showers at our health club. Um, so I think that that would just make a real nice statement for, for the people that come into our community. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Walker. Chair. The way I understand it, you are going to maintain the property, so our DPW wanted to go down there and take care of you, and move the trash, to put signage, right. coming out of uh, Broadwell Hospitality. Right, so the plan at this point would be to create a proposal for signage that the city would be involved in, and um, also trash the, what we have in mind, which, you know, again, is all contingent upon approval by the city, would be to make some kind of containers made out of wood slats that we would drop receptacles into that would really look nice along the water. The signage would be perhaps adhered to or fastened to the um, fence that's there now. Um, so that, you know, I don't know every, if that's every 20 feet or 30 feet or whatever that number is, but so that when, you know, they, they know what to do, you know, when they, they ah, they read, okay, yeah, let's park and we'll, we'll figure this out, you know. Any other uh, comments or questions? Oh, I was just going to say, I've been using the fitness club over there for years in that area. I mean, it's really marked improvement since um, uh, Alex's restaurant opened up. I think it would be anything on par with that. The first impression people get in the city on the waterfront, a lot of times, is there. I think that would be great because I mean, obviously the DPW is busy, and that's a difficult area to keep well maintained down there. And a lot of times, uh, you know, it doesn't always look the best when you get farther off the hotel property. 
signage, allowing people to know what's available and where to go walking uh, would be great. And there already is some signage, mm -hmm. kind of signage, signage historical markers, and things like that. But I think that would be great um, part of our downtown revitalization efforts have, uh, and waterfront revitalization efforts have been on signage that directs people to attractions and to the downtown. So I think that would be really great Anybody else? I just have uh, one clarification. I just want to make sure. Uh, the mayor mentioned that uh, we uh, collected approximately $1,200 in 2016. And this contract calls for uh, $1,000 uh, that uh, mm -hmm. Broadwell Hospitality would pay us. Um, and it says in return for that, uh, not only will you do all the maintenance, not maintenance, but take care of the place, uh, it says that it's 276 feet of uh, frontage. <coughs> Can you give me a sense of uh, where, where that, that 276 feet of uh, docking marina space is? I mean, it says north section of East Linear Park. Is it like from Bridge Street? Uh, right. It, it is actually from the bridge. You drew a line down there from the bridge north to right um, up to where the Alex's dockage starts. Um, that's, that's that area, the entire area. Yep. All right. Thanks for clearing that up. Uh, any other issues or questions, comments? Seeing none, can I have a motion? Second. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Thank you for coming. Item number two, Deborah Code, City Chamberlain, request authorization to attend the NICOM Fall Training School in Saratoga Springs, New York, on September 10th through the 15th, 2017. This is Code, uh, anything you want to add? Thank you, Councilor. This is the uh, conference that provides the continuing education for my credential municipal finance officer designation. Questions or comments? Second. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Item number three. Deborah Code, City Chamberlain, request authorization for Joanne Woodward to attend the NICOM Fall Training School in Saratoga Springs, New York, on September 10th through the 15th, 2017. Thank you, Councilor. This will put Joanne on the first leg of the Credential Municipal Finance Officer <coughs> Program. Comments on this? Second. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Code. Item number four. Mayor William J. Barlow Jr. requests consideration for paying the claim submitted by Ross Barbarino, resident of 58 East 9th Street, in the sum of $231.83 related to the repair costs incurred and his plumbing was affected by work performed by the city of Oswego on a nearby water line. The city's insurance carrier, Nimer, denied the claim. Uh, anybody here that uh, would like to discuss this? Uh, is there anybody here? Yes, Mr. Barbarino, you want to give us a brief rundown? Come up here. Well, the... Um the incident happened back in October of last year, and um, I've just been trying um, very hard to get the, the claim paid since that time. Um, I've talked to a lot of people, and no, nothing has really ac been accomplished from it. Um, basically, that, that's pretty much okay. it from, from the ones I know, well, I know you were here a couple weeks ago. Right, cor you, that's uh, correct. You gave us a nice detailed report on the, on the events that happened. Right. Any, uh, There's no updates or anything that I can add to it since my presentation when I was here last. All right. Are there any comments uh, or questions before I ask one? Okay. Good. Councilor Walker. I just have one question. Why did our insurance timer uh, just clean up? Uh, In the packet, if you read uh, the attachment, it said that uh, I have to turn to it, but uh, they gave a reason. It said they denied the claim, citing as the basis of a denial the belief that the city did not cause the water main break, and once the break was identified, the city followed proper procedure for making repairs. And the city's deductible through NIMER is $50,000 per occurrence. So there was a, a reason given. But at that time, I didn't have any um, documentation from the plumbing inspector. I don't know if that would have made, made a difference. Maybe it would have, maybe not. I don't really know. Um, no, not at, not at this point. Uh, are there any other uh, 
comments? I, I do have uh, some concerns, to tell you the truth, Mr. Barbarino. Uh, I, I really feel bad that this happened to you. Uh, mm -hmm. I did do some uh, research on this. Uh, I did go see the uh, plumber. Uh, and I did discuss uh, what happened in that event. And he confirmed basically what you said. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is that um, when a water main break happens in the city of Oswego, I, I think well, Councilor McLaughlin can probably tell more about this than I can uh, in the DPW department, but when they dig a hole in, let's say it's a, a water main break in the month of February and it's uh, 20 degrees out and it's 6 o'clock and pitch black, they're in a hole with water, mud, and they're trying to get it fixed. And things like sediment or dirt can get into a pipe and eventually work its way into the plumbing system of your home. Uh, that, I, I can't deny that. Uh, but what I'm concerned about is, is the fact that uh, when I talked to the plumber, he said that you had a special type of toilet. You had a mixing valve. Tempering, had, va tempering valve. A temper valve. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know what this was, and he explained it to me. I don't know, do you? Anybody know what a temper valve is? No. Ba ba basic, basically, <laughs> During the summertime, when your toilet, uh, the toilet tank sweats, this mixing valve actually mixes hot water with, with cold, cold water, so the water in the tank is not that cold, and the tank doesn't sweat. It's a way to prevent that. Now, in, in my family, uh, my, my wife puts a little suit on the tank to prevent that. From <laughs> but you have a fancy, you have a fancy uh, valve called a mixing valve, mm -hmm. well, which was about $110. Well, the plumber told me the reason it was making all that noise was like a jackhammering from the upper level of my house right down to my basement. It felt like the whole house was shaking. And he said the reason that was making that noise was because it was lacking the cold water. There was no cold water coming well, through, and the, pi and the pipes were just going crazy. Well, the mixing valve... And it has to have, it, that, it, has to have that mix of hot and cold. There's, there's an issue of whether the uh, dirt in the line created the, uh, the mixing valve failure. I well, mean, well, as I talked to your plumber, he said, mixing valve is no different than any other mechanical mm -hmm. part. Mixing valves right. uh, can fail. The uh, point I'm saying is, was it because of the dirt in the right. line? Again, when I left the house that day, everything was working. Um. <laughs> now, I did bring some exhibits. <laughs> <laughs> I did bring some exhibits. Now, what I'm concerned about is not your claim, all right? All right. What I'm concerned about is next week, next month, next winter, a year from now, two years from now, when some of us will still be here. And, and if, if we give you your claim, okay, and we say uh, that we should pay for this, uh, I'm concerned that uh, I do have some previous experience with this issue, okay? I do own rental property. And in the past 30 years, I've had tenants who've called me. Uh, and said that uh, my sink is not, uh, I'm not getting any water out of my sink. And really what it comes down to is, this is the end of your faucet in the sink, it's called an aerator. And uh, when I've gotten a call from a tenant, I go down and I'll find one or two pieces of uh, dirt in there. You blow it out or whatever you have to do, you put it back together, and it works fine. That little piece will block water from coming out of that faucet. So what I'm concerned about is, if we say yes to you here, uh, next year, next month, whenever, next year this happens, and somebody gets a little dirt in there, they call a plumber, it's $75 for the plumber to show up, you add tax, and maybe uh, they put a new aerator in, it's going to be $100. We're going to be inundated with uh, these claims, left and right, for something that could easily be taken care of by just cleaning it out. In addition to that, that's, that's the faucet. Here is Exhibit B. <laughs> This happens to be a very common uh, uh, toilet tank uh, valve, mm -hmm. fill valve. And I've had the occasion where a tenant would call me and said that my toilet's not uh, running any water. Well, a simple fix for that is you pull the cap off, you uh, turn this knob here, and you take this little rubber gasket off right here, and you uh, clean that. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, 60 cent part. Mm -hmm. But again, if we're going to get claims from uh, residents in the city of Oswego because their toilet is not producing any water for a 60 cent part, it's going to cost us $100. Again, we're opening a can of worms here. <coughs> I have a lot of sympathy for Mr. Barbarino on this issue, but if we go uh, along with this, we're opening the city to a lot of what I would call claims that are very 
easy to fix and, and wouldn't require a plumber. So that's, that's the comment that I have. There's okay. other members on the committee, not just okay. myself, but, uh, and we're going to vote on that in a minute, but I'm going to vote no based on the fact that uh, I think we're opening a can of worms that the city doesn't, shouldn't be involved with. That's the end of my little show and tell. Anybody else have any uh, comments? Yes, Council. I just have a question for you. Is that used, or is that a new part that you brought? <laughs> this happens to be a part that was uh, donated by one of our uh, fellow uh, residents here in the city. And it is, uh, I believe. I just didn't know if we had to bring in some sanitizing wipes or something <laughs> like that for you. We didn't let you touch it. <laughs> Besides, the water in the tank is, is clean. Good point. Oh, any other uh, comments or questions uh, before we? Uh, Yes, Councilor. Uh, with none of the showmanship, uh, when Mr. Barberino called me, I explained to him essentially the same thing: was that the claim was denied, and you know, if it mm -hmm. came before the council, I would stand my ground with the same mm -hmm. precedent that you know we're not going to fund the claim based on the denial that was already issued. So that's, that's where I stand. Thank, thank you. Uh, you are uh, you're in uh, Van Buren's ward? No, it's in no, Ms. Oh, McLaughlin's okay. ward. Oh, okay, got it. All right. Um, I think we've uh, discussed uh, toilets and aerators long enough. Uh, thank you very much for uh, coming. Uh, do we have a motion on this? Uh... Make a motion. Second. Councilor Corradino. No. Councilor Van Buren. No. Councilor Reynolds. No. Councilor Walker. No. Councilor Emmons. No. Thank you, Mr. Barbara. Moving on to uh, item five. Mayor William J. Barlow received a request from the Oswego Yacht Club for a waiver of the $10 boat fee for six sailboats at the Oswego Marina from August 11th to August 21st, 2017. They are to be used in the National Hospice Regatta hosted by the Oswego Yacht Club. Additional requests have also been made. Allow food trucks, allow out of town donated boats to leave dry sailed boats at International Pier, one free slip for Race Committee Pro, one free slip for race committee boat from Sodas Bay Yacht Club. Erica Hill? I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Mayor Barlow. It's, it's the toilet thing that's impacting me right now. It's, you got uh, to really showing your age there. Uh, <laughs> Real you old the, for uh, that political one. party, right? It's about do, we need a, do we need a break, Counselor? Are you a Excuse me, Mayor Barlow. Um... Yes, I had a uh, meeting uh, with the Yacht Club about some issues, and they uh, brought this up and kind of wanted to get it out of the way. Uh, most of it's uh, pretty standard business, other than the uh, waiver, uh, $10 waiver for the uh, boat fee, the storage fee for the six sailboats. I know that you know we're uh, kind of took a policy against waivers, but I don't know if this really kind of fits into the event policy where. Uh, it's really more of, the, of just a storage fee. However, uh, the need for storage comes from a regatta that they're having. And they're just asking uh, these sailboats come in uh, to be used in the regatta for people from out of town or out of state who need a boat to participate and obviously can't transport it in. So they're just asking if we will uh, waive the fee to store these boats uh, because the boats are essentially being donated to begin with to allow people to participate in the regatta. So I think there's members of the Yacht Club here that can better speak to this, but uh, I felt comfortable speaking to that one point to uh, allow it to be brought to you for consideration, and I'll let them speak to the rest. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is John Gary. I am the treasurer of the Oswego Yacht Club and co-chair with uh, Dan Mather, who couldn't make it tonight uh, for this regatta. Uh, just a little background. This regatta is overseen by a national organization called the Nas National Hospice Regatta Alliance, which oversees 23 regattas throughout the country that support their local hospice. Um, we are hosting ours uh, June 17th, and in the past, it has generated about $20,000 uh, for that nonprofit organization. This is kind of a uh, regatta that 
uh, rewards the skippers and the crews from those 23 regattas who won their regatta. And what it is is the boats that come in, they don't, they, as the mayor indicated, they do not bring their own boats. We have uh, secured uh, 13, we're going to have 13 participants from throughout the country, mostly east of the Mississippi, from Ohio, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, um, Anna uh, Annapolis, Maryland. We'll bring in crews of uh, five people. And the local J24 Association has donated um, 13 boats to this, very generously. Uh, it's quite an investment for them. There's a risk in it. Um, you know, we've had to take out insurance and, and things like that to make sure that if anything is damaged. We also have had the cooperation from the Sodus Bay Junior Sailing Association who have uh, secured from U.S. Sailing, which is the National Sailing Association, uh, thir 11 sales that are all the same, which is very important. We want everybody to be competitive. Uh, so what we're asking for is that these boats be allowed to be there. They're going to be here for a J-24 regatta the week before. And the masts have to be uh, taken down and put up, and this would allow us to just leave the boats there um, without having to take the masts down, having them take them home, and then bringing them back. So it's a convenience that we would, we would really appreciate. The regatta is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we invite people to come down. As a matter of fact, if the mayor would, you know, it's on his, hopefully he can fit it on his schedule, come down and greet the uh, participants on Thursday evening. Um, there'll be a dinner in, on Saturday evening with awards and an auction. And if anybody is interested, members of the club would be willing to take people out to watch the race from the water, which if you've never been out to see a sailboat race, while from land it looks a little confusing, boats are all going in different directions, but from the water it is pretty exciting. Uh, and you certainly are invited to, uh, to come down and participate in that. So we have uh, three days of activities. Uh, these people are all staying in town, so they're going to be contributing uh, you know, tax dollars to the community, and we try to purchase everything that we can uh, locally. So we're looking for uh, the uh, counselor's uh, support in this effort. So anybody have any questions about this? Any questions from the uh, council? Yes, Councilor Emmons. Yes. My question is, do we have a sense of um, the, I'm looking at all the waivers that are being requested, but I don't have an overall dollar figure to kind of compare that to in terms of what's the total cost that we were, we were being asked to waive. So $10 for both fee, what is that in terms of an actual dollar amount, not $10, it's well, it would be, there would be, um, I, what does it say there, six boats, I think, would be there from uh, Sunday, the week before the regatta, to basically um, Thursday, which is when the regatta starts. So it would be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, four days for six boats. And whatever the normal dry slip, you know, dry sail fee is for the boats to stay there, if somebody was bringing their boat in from out of town and said, I want to... I want to leave it here for a week, so I'm ac actually not sure what the, uh, you know, what your fee, fee would be. So I think it would be eight, so it would be sixty, you know, sixty dollars a day for six days. So three hundred and sixty dollars, I guess, based on those fees. Thank you. Oh yes, yeah. uh, Councilor, just I just have a statement. I, I guess in my opinion that this actually should have gone through the event committee, special event committee that we have for review, to be able to gather those numbers for us, uh, and to make determination about the waivers of fees. I, I don't think this is any different than any other special event that we have in terms of process that it comes before the council. Um, and I'm not trying to say anything negatively about your event, but we ask other groups just like yours that are requesting use of city services and fees and those sorts of things to actually go through a process now that's chaired by our community development director. Um, my fear is if we constantly uh, circumvent that process that we've worked hard to lay out, um, it defeats the purpose of the work that was done and certainly defeats the, the purpose of the process. So uh, my recommendation would be to table this and to uh, turn it over to the Special Events Committee for review. Sure. Um, hi, I'm Mike Anderson. I'm the Commodore of the Yacht Club, and 
one thing I'll point out is it's not $10 a day, it's $10 for the whole regatta. So we're talking 60 bucks. Um, in our lease, in our, the agreement we have with the city already, they waive the fee for the, the, our local hospice regatta because it's hospice. Um, all the profits from this go to the National Hospice Organization who divides the profits between the national and the local hospice. So if you've ever had anybody that needed to take advantage of their services, it's about the most worthy cause you can, you know, you can have. And most of the issues we have are already covered in the agreement we have for other regattas we do. But because we were awarded the national one, which was not in the list of ones we normally do, we went forward to make the request because we felt it was appropriate to come to you guys and let you know we're hosting a national regatta. We're hoping this is going to turn into a, a two to three year commitment by the National Hospice uh, Association to allow us to run the regatta. Normally this is run in places like Charleston, Annapolis, St. Petersburg. So we're really the smallest venue they probably ever run it in. And we think it brings a lot of national attention to the city of Oswego. And in exchange for the accommodations the city's making, we're giving you a sponsorship um, in exchange for that uh, in our program and in all the documentation on our website. The city of Oswego will be listed as a sponsor of the uh, National Hospice Regatta. So. Well, I, I think uh, Councillor um, Emmons' point, I mean, everything you said uh, I mean, makes sense. And, uh, you know, I'm all for this. Uh, it just said uh, about a year ago, uh, we tried to modify the way we did things as far as uh, for requests like this that would go through a, uh, an event committee. And there would be a process uh, for all events that okay. required public space. So I think he's just pointing out that you know, we had a plan, and, and that was what we were supposed to be doing. Right. Uh, but again, the event is worthwhile. Right. And the re I yeah, guess the reason of... we felt this was the appropriate way to approach it is because in our lease, we, you know, we list out regattas, and we say you know, and we, and what the accommodations are, and we say, and any other regattas that would be awarded to, this, to the Oswego Yacht Club. So. Maybe the city attorney can shed some light on this uh, area. Not from a legal perspective, but through the chair. Um, Twenty so years ago, I uh, was uh, honored and privileged to, to help establish this event. I'm no longer affiliated with uh, uh, the Swigo County Hospice, Friends of Hospice, or the Regatta, but I was there at the beginning. <clears throat> this is a big deal. This is a really big deal for the city of Oswego to host this event. This will shine the spotlight on the city once again in a national venue. Um, it's the first time hearing of this, and I've got chills when I heard that Oswego is going to be the host of the National Hospice Regatta. Uh, as Commodore said, uh, we're now on par with San Francisco. Annapolis, Newport, Rhode Island, St. Petersburg, Florida, Oswego, New York. Um, I absolutely respect the process. These folks um, probably did not know about the event calendar and, and that process. I guess my piece of advice is uh, probably more for, for the public relations aspect of this than the, than the process. Send this through. Make a statement today, tonight, and next week that you stand behind this event and allow the process in the future to take its place. For $60 or $360 or maybe even $600, the benefit and the reward to the city of Oswego is going to be returned 10, 20, 100 fold. Trust me on this. And I, I'm not speaking as the city attorney, I'm speaking as a citizen who's been there from the beginning and recognizing that this event, has, that, that this community, that this hospice and this, this uh, yacht club has been recognized nationally and, and awarded this honor. And let's get behind it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Through the chair, if I could. I yes. just, <clears throat> perhaps I should have directed the yacht club through the events committee, but <coughs> I thought the events committee was more for barricades, OPD, OFD, DPW over time, road closures, noise waivers, etc. And I kind of figured most of this was already under the Yacht Club lease and 
you know, it's out in the lake, it's waiving fees of a slip. So maybe that's where some of the confusion is. Whatever way the committee goes, I think, is obviously the way it goes. But yeah, I'll take some responsibility. I thought it would was probably not a big deal to just skip the events process, seeing that there's really no, besides the fee waiver, no conflict with any other event, road closure, work of departments. So that's what prompted me to expedite the process for the Yacht Club. Uh, through the chair, I guess maybe my recommendation would be to uh, allow this to move forward this evening on the condition that you do speak with our director of community development, who's the chair of our events committee, for him to be able to at least set his eyes on this from an event policy standpoint and be able to communicate back to the council this week regarding uh, that particular policy and if it, it seems and you know. we've, we've talked to Justin about this when we talked about the overall plan this year, so I think he's aware of, of, the, of what's going on. Yeah, if he could you know, issue basically an advisory opinion in some respects from his position, I think that would be helpful. Just, I, I, I want to respect the process. I hear And you. I hear every, yeah. what everybody else is saying, uh, but I, I think whether it's 600 or $6,000, we, we put a policy and process into play, and I'd like to see that uh, at least in some form uh, for this particular item um, be used. So to allow it move forward so it can be voted on the council next week uh, with uh, uh, Director Redrick uh, giving us some advisory opinion in the meantime. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my only comment was just that this situation in particular feels like it could circumvent the events committee in the sense that theoretically it could still happen without even going to the committee because they could just pay for these fees and have that event regardless. Sure it could just go on. So I could see it going around the events committee because it's nothing that they really need to approve. They're asking specifically something that would come to the council anyway. So I, I, I understand the spirit of it, but I don't know if that was really violated th through the events policy, but you know, I'm okay with, you know, I'll vote however it's going to go. So I just... All right. I, I think we beat this one into mm -hmm. the ground enough. Uh, <laughs> and if uh, you can just touch base with... Uh, Mr. Rudzik on this, uh, okay. I think we're all going to be satisfied. No, oh, Councilor goes again. I just wanted to make one statement. Uh, just to remind everybody, this weekend is also the weekend that the Council and the City has approved sponsorship for our uh, Bicentennial Canal Theater project. So I think it's rather fitting that we'd have this um, national-based uh, audience here that weekend um, on the events going on to highlight the water park of Swiggo. So I just wanted to remind people of that because um, we're going to be starting promotion real soon on that. And uh, I just thought I'd mention it to so get the word out to everybody at the Yacht Club. I'm in a time in a swiggle, late August, a lot of times it's kind of sleepy and people are leaving. I think this sounds like a great thing, so I get a chance to support it uh, by full council. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, at this point, we can have a motion. <coughs> Second. Councilor Corradino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Do we need a resolution? <coughs> yes, Mr. Rudrick will probably give us one. Thank you very much. For Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys supporting everything we do down there. It's a big help for us. Let's see. Moving on to item six. Kevin Caracoli, city attorney, requests consideration of the common council to approve a transfer of approximately 39 square feet of city property to Bond, Schenick, and King, owners of property located at the corner of East First Street and Oneida Street. Mr. Caracoli. Mr. Chairman, I know it's hard to believe but attorneys do make mistakes. Now, uh, present company excluded, I wasn't part of this deal. <laughs> but about uh, 2005, uh, apparently the city of Oswego uh, struck up a, an agreement with the law firm of Bon Schenck and King. Uh, they were doing some additions to the building and they were looking for a, literally a 39 square foot uh, part of the city property that uh, uh, that the building that they were that they were constructing would encroach upon uh, through prior council action uh, resolution was adopted and the property was transferred uh, and then in the course of uh, the last several weeks I believe it was determined that the parcel that the city transferred to the law firm was actually on the opposite side of the building and had nothing to do with the city property. It was actually uh, part of the, the old uh, train tr tunnel. So uh, what is being proposed now is to 
undo that transaction from 12 years ago and get it right. Uh, uh, the law firm of Bond, Schoenig and King is proposing to do all of the, the legal work. Uh, there's not a whole lot of heavy lifting here, but it's really more a matter of correcting the record and uh, transferring the actual correct property to them. In exchange, they will give back the uh, small portion of the uh, train tunnel that uh, otherwise belongs to the city, and uh, life goes on. So I am uh, recommending that you consider uh, approving this, this uh, action and uh, by resolution. Uh, once, it's, uh, once it is approved, um, the paper is just really a matter of transferring paperwork. It's a quick claim deeds back and forth. Again, the law firm is taking care of all expenses and responsibility, recording fees. The city's uh, expense of this is, is really, there is no extra added expense to the city. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, any questions for the councilor? Seeing none, can I have a motion? Second. Councilor Corradino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. And we need a resolution. We need a resolution, uh, City Attorney. You got it. Thank you. Item number seven, Deborah Code, City Chamberlain, requests authorization to transfer funds for code enforcement overtime. Mrs. Code. Thank you, Councilor. This is a result of the Code Enforcement Cleanup Initiative weekend. When the budget was prepared, that weekend wasn't planned, so this is uh, expected to be a one-time occurrence. Just in, in, the, in the interest of transparency, it's the little, amount was? It's a little over $500. Okay, so? Five, 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 ten, seventy-eight, right. I think. Right, so as long as everybody is aware, we're not talking about thousands of dollars. No. Okay. Any questions, uh, comments? How about a motion? Make a motion. Second. Councilor Corradino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Cote. Item number eight, Carolyn Anderson, Animal Control Officer, requests permission from Michael Riley, purchasing agent, to obtain bids for a replacement roof at the Oswego Animal Shelter at 621 East Seneca Street. Um, to the best of my knowledge, the animal shelter was built in 1980 and I do not believe we've ever had any work done on the roof since that time. So the current roof is about 37 years old. Um, it is in need of replacement, and uh, I would hope that we could, that Mike can uh, seek out some bids for that. Thank you, any questions, uh, comments? Seeing none, how about a motion? Second. Councilor Corradino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Item number nine, the engineering office states funding is available through the Water Infrastructure Improvement Act, WIIA, of 2017 for qualifying projects. It is in the, in the city's best interest to submit application for funding through the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation for wastewater treatment plant, SCADA system upgrades. <coughs> and would like to speak about this. Uh, anybody? Mr. Johnson, didn't see you there in the corner. There is an opportunity now uh, due by <clears throat> June 23rd for the applications. Um, this project fits within the scope of the applications, and so it's to our benefit to make that uh, application happen. And uh, the Director of Community Development is going to take care of the application. So it's in our benefit. If it's uh, cheaper or free money, we should try for it. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I know several of us uh, counselors uh, took the tour of the uh, east side and west side uh, wastewater uh, facilities, and, uh, and uh, I'd say um, it needs some updating. <laughs> so I'm hopeful we can get some uh, free money. Mr. Ridgick? I just wanted to give the councilors a heads up that uh, this is one of four applications that we will be submitting. So this is one that's available for discussion tonight, but there will be three more, up to three more that will be presented. Um, but as Bob just said, the deadline is June 23rd. So just to give you a notice, they will be coming off the floor. So I just wanted to give you that heads up. We are working diligently to uh, find funding opportunities for the city. Thank you, Mr. Roger. 
No other comments or questions? How about a motion? Make a motion. Second. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Item number 10 under discussion, Deborah Code City Chamberlain requests discussion of bonding resolution. I believe uh, Mayor Barlow is going to talk about this. <laughs> sure, thank you. Um, if you remember back uh, when we all first took office uh, last year, um, the city did not have a uh, capital project um, schedule. They didn't have a schedule of uh, reinvesting in city equipment or city facilities. There was no scheduled capital plan. There was no outline of really any uh, guidance on what to buy when. Uh, and that was something I think we all uh, agreed that we wanted to address. So we uh, worked and adopted a five-year capital expenditure plan. Uh, I believe council voted on that and we passed that together. Um, so that brings us to uh, tonight, which is, uh, brings us to now it's time to act on that plan. And uh, we have a uh, bond resolution that will do just that, that will enact the first two years, 2017 and 2018 of that plan. Um, I have copies of the five-year capital plan that uh, we passed. And or I have a copy that I can make. Um, so in this bond resolution um, is uh, three plows, uh, three yard, uh, and the plows are $225,000 each. So that is $675,000. That was identified in year 2018 in our capital plan. Uh, a three yard payloader at 165,000. 16 yard Packer garbage truck at 130,000. $200,000 street sweeper, a, a $95,000 six wheel dump truck. Two three quarter ton pickup trucks at $40,000 each, so that's 80,000. Uh, and then that was all in our 2018 part of our capital plan. In 2017, we had upgraded the fuel tanks and dispensers at the DPW. Uh, we priced that at 250000 uh, In 2017, we also passed uh, a rain uh, beautification project at the Forks of the Road, uh, the median of 104, uh, making it a rain garden. Uh, that's 150000 The weed harvester, 67000 We already bought that, but that's in this bond now. Uh, also in 2017, animal control HVAC and animal control security uh, at 80,000. Back to 2018, we had the animal control outdoor runs and the animal control holding area, enhancing those areas because if you've been to the animal control shelter, you know what that's like. That's uh, all of that animal control stuff is 250,000. Back to 2018 is a project that should have been finished years ago. I know Councillor Van Vieren's ad advocated for that. I'm happy to include it in this uh, plan, and that's the finishing the Brittany Hills uh, complex or development the way it should have been with street improvements. That's at 250000 Also in 2018, and in this resolution, will be uh, $75,000 for the Ponzi Recreation Building and Repair Upgrade. And then there's another approximately 82000 for contingent soft costs if uh, with some of the road work being done at Brittany Hill uh, and at the 104 Forks of the Road uh, change orders, et cetera, in there in case any of that happens. So to give some historical context, all those figures seem overwhelming. And I should note that there's the sewer fund ban, and that's uh, also included here. And that's repairs to the east side uh, wastewater plant valued at $180,000. Sewer vac, HVAC for east side and west side, uh, about $300,000 each, so that's $600,000. Dewatering equipment, dechlorination system. Those first three, as you know, are uh, pretty much involved in the consent decree and or the consent order. So we really don't have much of a choice. And like uh, Justin said, we're actually looking at the New York State water grants to help fund some of those projects as well. So. Uh, that may seem overwhelming, but you'll remember a few months ago, uh, after we adopted the capital plan, I came and spoke under discussion to this committee uh, about what we wanted to take out of that capital plan and include in the bond resolution to move forward. Uh, during that conversation, I spoke about how this will affect the city finances and the budget. 
uh, in 2017, was it 20, January 2017, last payment? So January 2017, we made the last payment on the marina that the city bought. Um, and that payment uh, was $537,500 a year. And I told you a few months ago when I spoke about that, that I wanted to keep this bond resolution under uh, uh, that amount, 537,500, uh, so that it didn't have any uh, worse implications on our operates, annual operating budget than the marina did. So uh, all of that money clocks us in to where the annual payment will be $460,000 a year. The interest rate isn't determined yet, so that will be plus interest. Uh, and the interest we're guessing is anywhere from 1.2 to 1.7, being very conservative on the 1.7. And, uh, you know, this just comes out of uh, most of this equipment, years and years of neglect and buildup and decades of just deferred maintenance. And, you know, it needs to be addressed or the quality of city services will go down. And uh, I think, you know, we've sat in these seats long enough and we're feeling the, um, the uh, effects of not investing in the city and, and uh, not investing in equipment and not making tough choices. And you know, I, I feel I have the obligation to not do that to my uh, uh, successor and not do that to the future generations of this community. Thank you, Mayor. Any uh, comments or questions for the Mayor? I just wanted to add that these are short-term loans, so they'll be five years or less. And it will also help with the constitutional tax limit, which will um, save our state aid. Well, I have to say, I, I do like that uh, we're not going to be incurring any additional expense. Uh, as you described, the marina expense is now off the books, so uh, that money that we had been paying. And how long was that uh, loan for, for the marina? Five years. Five years? Just continuing uh, payment structure, I guess. Uh, any other comments? Uh, not seeing any. How about a motion? Make a motion. Second. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Do we need a resolution? We need a resolution there? Um, the resolution comes from the Bond Council in New York and is read it down. All right. That was quick. Done. It's all done. Uh, under discussion, we do have one add-on I'm going to call 10A. Um, Councilor Nate Emmons uh, wants to have a discussion on the funds for the 2017 Children's Tree Lighting Ceremony. Uh, Councilor Emmons, would you like to open this? Absolutely. Thank you, Councilor Cardino. I'm going to turn most of this conversation over to Jen Lacerdo from the uh, Youth Bureau that leads uh, the tree lighting ceremony. And coordinates most of its activities. I know it seems pretty significantly early to talk about Christmas tree lighting, right? Although today I was in, uh, in uh, Rochester and there was a pretty significant hailstorm and actually there was ice all over the room, so it did feel like winter today, so very appropriate for tonight's conversation. Anyways, uh, tonight's conversation is really kind of, it's uh, being impressed upon because of a proposal and project that uh, Jen has been working on in terms of, of uh, making some changes to the tree lighting uh, ceremony and events this year. Uh, she has been uh, working hard to kind of go out to different vendors and look at different opportunities that we might have to improve upon the tree lighting. Uh, she stumbled upon one uh, particular idea, uh, which the council has before them tonight, to bring in, and I'll let her explain most of this, uh, but was to bring in actually live reindeer um, to the tree lighting this year for kids to be able to pet, and look at, and feel Christmassy in terms of the holiday spirit. Um, but that uh, particular company requests a deposit and uh, requests fast movement in terms of the ability to, to book um, because they book up pretty quickly and they go all around the United States. So. Um, one of the things I asked Jen to do is to not only bring that before the council tonight, but also to give the council a sense of an overall budget for this. Um, the Youth Bureau did not put as a part of their budget this year uh, for the tree lighting. I think it's $300, and I think we all know that it costs way more than $300 in terms of funding the tree lighting. So I've encouraged them for 2018 to actually include this 
an amount within their budget so we don't have to come to council um, and ask for you know special monies and monies to be flowed around. But, um, I thought it would be helpful to at least put a dollar figure in front of us for tonight uh, and to perhaps discuss that dollar figure as an overall dollar figure to uh, authorize for the tree lighting in itself and then let Jen and her team and Brian Chumpy and so on take a look at that dollar amount and um, you know, start divvying it up accordingly without the ability to come back to council really and ask for more. You know, it's kind of a set amount and however they want to go about using that within obviously reason is, is the amount that's been set aside. So that's kind of where we're at tonight uh, in terms of conversation. Ask Jen to kind of come up and kind of explain the work that she has done so far and the, the budget that she's put in front of us and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so in front of you, you have um, a list of what the ideas that we have. I know it, it does sound like a lot of money, but if it puts a smile on a child's face, I guess it's well worth it. If you have any questions about the amounts next to it, some of them are accurate, some of them are estimated, but they're pretty close to being accurate. All in all, it's really not a cheap event, as you've seen in the past, last year, the year before, and every year it seems to be getting bigger, so we want to make it better every year. Questions, Councilor uh, Yes, Councilor Walker. Are you having the reindeer uh, play rides too, or is it the... The, the two reindeer, um, when I talk to the man, what they do is you can, the kids can pet them, feed them, and, <laughs> quote, they smile when you tell them to smile. You can get pictures taken with them. And nobody in this surrounding area has ever done this. So he's actually said he's been wanting to come to Oswego, New York. So this is his opportunity to come here. So for four hours, two reindeer, he's going to bring a sleigh. Um, it doesn't, it's not a sleigh ride, it's just a sleigh, a display sleigh. He threw that in with that cost. But we also still want to have the horse and carriage ride, and at the request of the public, they want two of them because half the people last year didn't get a chance to get on the first one. So if we, the horse and carriage, yeah, that's, that's on there also. He gave us a pretty good deal on two rides, three hours, three hours, so... Yes, I, mean, I think the, the I think what the interest is, is here tonight is to authorize this amount, but with the understanding as well as a couple of things. One, it's not an amount to be exceeded for the tree lighting. This is it in terms of an amount. And number two, um, I know Jen has worked has worked uh, very hard uh, in terms of. Uh, there's quite a few folks that I think have indicated that they're willing to donate cash, really make cash donations to the city. Uh, to offset the cost of the tree lighting. So in terms of the overall cost, this is the cost that is anticipated, but the actual amount that the city may ultimately have to spend on the tree lighting may, may be less, uh, given those donations that I think some folks have already stepped forward and said, when can I make a cash donation because I really value this event and want to be able to, to donate money. I don't think we would turn down those types of donations. As well, I know Mimi's Home Cleaning Service, for example, is putting on a huge community-wide yard sale to, to be able to donate money for this. So I think there will be other, uh, other groups out there that will be wanting to do similar things and make donations to the city to offset the cost of this. But for this particular reindeer group, um, it's hard to um, put forth a very solid municipal IOU to this group without actually having the funds to kind of back up that IOU. I don't think we have an interest in actually paying a deposit, uh, but we have, obviously have to be able to have the authorization for funding to be able to go them to them and say, yes, we're a municipality, we're good for it, we've authorized the funding for it. Let's see if we can not have to actually put down the deposit uh, at this time. Thank you. Uh, I just want to clarify one thing. Uh, the public doesn't have this list, I assume. I can't see. Uh, last year we did uh, ice skating, and it's not on here. Is that not included this year? No, we, we're going to re um, replace the skating rink with the reindeer. Trying something different every year. Okay. Any other uh, comments, uh, Ms. 
Serto. I'll take a motion. Second. Second. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Under executive session, item number 11, Evan Caracoli, city attorney, requests executive session regarding proposed, pending, or current litigation. Specifically, I am seeking authority to settle the taxatorial action filed by the owners of McDonald's restaurant. Councilor Caracoli. Um, this would be uh, appropriate for executive session to talk about uh, uh, pending litigation. Uh, I know typical practice is to, to wait until the committee uh, business has finished. I do know in, in speaking with Ms. Deary that, that she has uh, uh, an appointment that she cannot avoid, she, so it doesn't look like she will be here for the end of the meetings. But uh, Ms. Deary and I have talked. Uh, we're both in alignment with our recommendation, and we're, we're prepared to share that and answer any questions uh, for you uh, in, in the executive session. At this point, I mean, our, our most recent operation is that uh, we uh, recess this particular meeting and continue with the other two meetings and then go into executive session after the final uh, meeting. Is that uh, okay with everybody? Sure. Okay. So we're going to have a motion to recess this meeting. Second. Wait a second. Can I just add on one more thing? Um, the company has offered to sell. They have these Christmas books the real story behind the names of the reindeer and I guess he sells thousands and thousands of them he has offered to sell them the night of the event and donate five dollars back to the city for every book that he sells so that'll help offset some stuff okay thank you very much once again where are we uh, did I have a motion, yes. a motion and a second. okay we're good Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. <coughs> this time I'd like to call the Physical Services Committee to order. Could you please call the roll? Councilor Van Buren. Here. Councilor Emmons. Here. Councilor McLaughlin. Here. Councilor Goza. Here. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the May 15th, 2017 committee meeting? I make a motion. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Uh, yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Gozik. Is there any old business to come before this committee? Seeing none, moving on to new business. Item number one, <clears throat> Thomas Cowles, DPW Commissioner, received a request from Brenda Marnetto to place a memorial bench in Bright Park Park, specifically along the back sidewalk near the water in memory of her brother. Questions or comments? I just have a, a comment. Um, Maybe it's more of a comment, not a question directed at the commissioner, but um, I guess I'm interested in, in, um, in seeing a longer term plan. In terms of, we're getting to a point where there's a number of park benches in Bright Bet Park, um, and uh, quite frankly, it's filling up the space. Uh, and so I think at some point, perhaps in the near future, we're going to have to consider uh, some sort of alternative. Uh, to benches, perhaps in Bright Back Park, um, because it is getting to be quite, quite a few. So just a general comment overall. Uh, I've actually discussed that with the commissioner. We talked about uh, once we hit the point where we've replaced all of the obsolete benches with donated benches, he will come before the council and say, you know, this is this is where I'm at as far as the benches that have been replaced. We're now at a point where we have way more uh, benches that are in good standing than poor. We can start talking about, you know saying this is the cutoff, we're going to start taking donations to other parks. So he's already been working on that, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get to that in the future. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. I'll make a motion. <coughs> Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. We got item number two, Thomas Kells, DPW Commissioner, received a request from Michelle Turner to place a memorial bench in Brightback Park in memory of her mother, Dawn M. Lyon, who passed away in August. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Gozik. Yes. We got item number three. The engineering department received a request for use of public space submitted by Paul Stewart, owner of a single family dwelling at 53 West Seneca Street, located in the first ward, for proposed 17 foot 8 inches by 44 foot 7 inches 
to construct a new four-foot high wood fence by between the sidewalk and property line fronting West Seneca Street. Council. Paul, well, would you like to speak on that? <coughs> yeah, the, the ambition two years ago of doing the stone fence fell dead after it was $20,000. That won't happen. So we'd like to do a wood fence. It's not four feet. It's less than that. It's three feet, but not to exceed the amount uh, permitted under our city code. It's also set back from the sidewalk no less than 24 inches. So it's a standard wood picket fence with a gate um, in the front of our property. We thought it would look cool, and we'd really like to make it happen. So thank you for your consideration. Thanks. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. I'll make a motion. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Gozer. Yes. We on to item number four. The city clerk's office received a request from Robert McGrath, owner of the Clubhouse Tavern, Spencer's Alley, located at 124, 126 West 2nd Street, for the use of public space for two parking spaces fronting their property on Saturday, July 1st, 2017, in order to host a breakfast fundraiser to benefit the Child Advocacy Center. There's an attachment. Robert. Yes, uh, there's a typo in this. It's supposed to be Sunday, July 2nd, I believe, um, instead of Saturday. We want to do it the morning of the parade and try to make it into an all-day event for the people coming down for the breakfast and then turn around and watch the parade. Great. I'm just asking for the two spaces I usually use during the Harbor Fest or, or the breakfast we do for the United Way every year. Uh, we'll be cleaned up by 1 o'clock. Everything we put away and, and the parking will be available for, for the parade. Great. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. Make a motion. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Gozer. Yes. We got item number five. The city clerk's office received a request from Stewart, director of the Oswego Renaissance Association, for use of public space at various locations in order to place signs advertising the neighborhood blocks and areas that have been awarded block challenge grants and neighborhood pride grants. And there's an attachment. Paul. Hi, uh, thank you for that consideration. Uh, this year, I believe you should have an attachment. I believe 15 Renaissance Block Challenge grant signs and approximately 10, I may be off, it's in your handout, uh, neighborhood pride grant signs. These are the same as the prior three years. As you know, it's a really great uh, movement. And I believe by the end of this fall, we will have leveraged about 2.0 million in our targeted neighborhoods and expanding. So, thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Motion. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Gozer. Yes. We got item number six. The Community Development Office received a request from the Oswego YMCA regarding the sixth annual Dragon Boat Festival to be held on Friday, August 25th, and Saturday, August 26th at Brightbeck Park in the Oswego Harbor Waterway. The event is requesting use of the bandstand. They are also requesting approval to utilize portable sanitation, permission to serve alcohol, use sound application, and a firework display during the event. Uh, is anyone here to speak to that? I didn't think anybody came in. Um, the event's pretty much the same with the exception of some of the improvements that they've made. This did go through the event committee. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. <coughs> Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Gozik. Yes. Do we need a resolution? We'll get one. Thank you. Justin. Any other business to come before this committee? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Gozik. Yes. <coughs> At this time, I'd like to call the Planning and Development Committee meeting to order. Please call the roll. Councillor Emmons. Here. Councillor Gozik. Here. Councillor Corradino. Here. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the May 1st, 2017 committee meeting. Motion. Second. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Gozik. Yes. Councillor Corradino. Yes. Item number one under old business. Kevin Caracoli, city attorney, states that Bell Atlantic Mobile Systems of Allentown Incorporated, DBA, Verizon Wireless proposed to construct and operate a small cell wireless communications facility to be located at the Charles E. Riley Elementary School in order to improve cellular coverage for its consumers using cell service within the city of Oswego. 
City Attorney's requesting that said application be referred to the Planning Board for an advisory opinion. Upon advisory opinion, the application will be returned to the Planning and Development Committee for further consideration and a public hearing will be scheduled. Mr. Kirkola. Thank you. So, you recall uh, several weeks ago you had authorized a referral of uh, several, well, two in this case, uh, applications for uh, small cell locations. Um, there were actually three, and uh, now I will take responsibility for this oversight. <laughs> uh, the three that were submitted by Verizon were for the uh, McCroby building, the uh, Walmart store, and the Charles E. Riley School. Uh, this deals with the Charles E. Riley Elementary School location, which was uh, inadvertently uh, omitted from that request. Um, so what I'm asking for today is to rectify that by adopting a resolution to send this on for an advisory opinion um, and as I slipped in a Latin term that you you overlook counselor nunc pro tunc and, that, and what that means is uh, then for now and so <clears throat> it's essentially you're giving retroactive effect to uh, to the resolution to the oversight completely legal completely appropriate to do um, and in this case, uh, if it were the one and only application, uh, I might have been hesitant to bring this to you, but uh, this really is uh, essentially lumped together with the other, uh, the other two. Same representatives uh, are going to be at the planning board. Uh, the same exact uh, requests are being made, just happens to be three different locations. So I am urging your support for this uh, recommendation. Questions from the committee? Do have a motion? Second. Councillor Emmons? Yes. Councillor Gozik? Yes. Councillor Corradino? Yes. Item number two under old business. Kevin Caracoli, City Attorney States, Bell Atlantic Mobile Systems, Bellantown Incorporated, DBA, Verizon Wireless, has proposed to construct and operate three separate small cell wireless communications facilities to be located at the McCroby Building, the Charles E. Riley Elementary School, and the Walmart store in order to improve cellular coverage. For its consumers using cell service within the city of Estrego. City Attorney is requesting the City Clerk's Office schedule public hearings on Monday, June 26, 2017, for the three proposed small cell wireless communication facilities. Council. You've said it all, but uh, to, um, just to, to reiterate, under the city's uh, wireless communications local law, uh, this body must schedule public hearings and then ultimately uh, act requests for uh, the uh, cell locations. These again are all small cell sites. These are not cell towers. These will be affixed either to the sides of buildings or on top of a, a rooftop, but they're all considered small cell sites. Again, you just need to schedule the public hearings, which I believe uh, we've been working with the clerk's office in terms of staggering them not anticipating a big uh, crowd uh, for these, you never know, um, but uh, they would be, the idea would be that they're, they're held within, you know, probably five minute increments of each other uh, on July, or June 26th. So again, I urge your consideration of this request. Any questions from the room? Any comments? Uh, Councillor Caracoli, uh, you remember several weeks ago when we talked about this initially, there had some reservations uh, about uh, the verbiage uh, concerning lead paint. Yes. And uh, can you, uh, I happen to know what the resolution of that was, but can you share it with uh, the council? Yes, uh, your, your, the art of persuasion works, uh, Councillor. Uh, the, the company heard you loud and clear. They uh, specifically excluded uh, that uh, representation and warranty from the city. There is, by way of full disclosure, uh, the potential for uh, for lead paint and or asbestos in our city-owned uh, facility, the McCroby building, uh, they have specifically carved out any uh, responsibility of the city for any potential exposure to workers who who might install that uh, uh, you know the, the the cell site if it's approved um, doesn't correct the situation, but it but it addresses it and they are specifically um, omitting uh, or exonerating, if you will, the city of Oswego from any responsibility uh, for potential exposure to, to their workers. They're covering it. 
Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? If not, can I have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Gozik. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Under new business, item number one, the city clerk's office received a request from Kristen DeSantis of the Sting of Oswego Incorporated, located at 49 West Bridge Street, for a waiver of the noise ordinance in order to host live acoustic music, two piece sets, on the patio of their establishment periodically during the summer months. Anybody here to speak to that? Good evening. This is the same uh, resolution we have every year. Uh, we're asking them to get a waiver. I live three, literally three doors down from the Sting, and there's absolutely no issue. They're entertaining all summer long. Any questions from the council? I have a motion. Second. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Councilor Gozik. Yes. Councilor Corradino. Yes. Thank you. Item number two under new business. The city clerk's office received a request from Nicholas J. Serino, owner of the Lighthouse Lanes and Court LLC, located at 295 East Albany Street, for a waiver of the noise ordinance in order to host musical performances outside in their parking lot as a part of their super concert summer concert series during the months of July, August, and possibly September for rain dates. Mr. Serino is also requesting a waiver of the noise ordinance during Super Dirt Week, October 2nd, 2017, as well as any rain dates if needed. And there is Yes, sir. Hi. Yeah, my name is Nick Serino. I'm the co-owner of Lighthouse Lanes located on Champagne Drive next to the Oswego Speedway. Uh, I'm here to request a waiver of the uh, local no uh, uh, noise ordinance to have some uh, live music outside in our parking lots. There's a couple Friday nights in July, a couple Friday nights in August, and the... Um, week of October 4th through 8th. <clears throat> I do believe that's the, uh, that's the dirt week that the Speedway hosts. We want to do some outside music, possibly then also. Uh, the music will want to go to uh, 12 o'clock on, uh, on those nights. So I'm talking like four nights during the summer and the first week of October. Any questions from the committee? Have a motion then? Motion. Second. Thank Councilor you. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Councilor Gozik. Yes. Councilor Corradino. Yes. Item number three on a new business. The Zoning and Planning Department received a request from Paul and Tina Sawyer, contract purchasers of the property located at 10 Mark Fitzgibbons Drive for a zone change from R2 Residential to B2 Central Business. We request the proposed zone change be forwarded on to the Hi. Hi, how are Tina you? Tina Sawyer, Paul Sawyer. Um, we obviously have a purchase offer in on the property that is contingent upon a zone change. Um, the packets that we gave you, should you have any questions, we're here. Questions from the committee? Can you just, uh, I know we've talked, uh, but yep. uh, for the sake of everybody, uh, could you explain what your business plan is and what your plans are for the property? The property currently is uh, pretty dilapidated. Uh, basically, we're going to remove any buildings that are falling down unsightly. Um, in the front of the property, we want to put in a new building for a storage unit, self-storage. Um, Long-term goals is to repair both barns that are on the property and use that as a wedding venue. If possible. One of the barns is pretty bad, but we're going to try and save it. <laughs> this is the property that's basically right on that corner there that has all the... Right, right Curtis on Manor, it's been referred to? Yep. He's the old dairy, old dairy he wouldn't farm. know that. He, he hasn't lived all... <laughs> I haven't lived here that long. That it was 40 years ago. <laughs> but I know it doesn't look good right now. So. Yeah. It, yeah, any, it does not. <laughs> yes. They've right. been doing storage there for years, so... You can tell. <laughs> I fully support this, by the way. Thank you. Any questions? Any comments? Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Councilor Gozik. Yes. Councilor Corradino. Yes. Thank you. 
Any other items that need to or want to come before this committee? If not, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Councillor Gozik. Yes. Councillor Corradino. Yes. <laughs>